hit the, the noon hour. So I, I wanted to make sure um, we may have a few others jumping on as, as we start here, uh, but wanted to again, uh, take a moment to uh, welcome all of you to joining this forum. Um, we have a, a special welcome for the panelists, uh, those that have uh, various interests in uh, education in our, in our greater Susquehanna Valley. And uh, I, I wanted to just um, start by um, welcoming our Senator, Senator John Gordner, representing the 27th Senatorial District. So we're so grateful to have him here. And I know his district encompasses um, uh, several satellites for the Luzerne County Community College. So um, uh, of, of vital interest um, as Luzerne is, is part of the, uh, the pipeline to educating the current and future workforce for our region. Um, I also want to welcome um, uh, Susan Spry from Luzerne County Community College. Um, so we're, we're so grateful you could be with us as uh, uh, with the academic affairs hat that you wear, but also we understand uh, as acting president right now. So we do send well wishes to uh, your president and uh, wish him the very best. I also want to uh, recognize uh, one of your other colleagues, Melissa Day, who is working out of the Greater Susquehanna um, uh, the Luzerne County satellite in Watsontown. Um, so we're so grateful that you could be with us and it looks like you have a great backdrop of a classroom behind you. So uh, uh, certainly near and dear to all of us. And of course, uh, from the CSIU, uh, uh, Bernadette, uh, we are grateful to have you here as the outreach specialist for the CSIU and someone who's definitely plugged into workforce trends here. And John Karelja from the CSIU as well. My name is Malcolm Dirk. I'm the Chief of Staff at Susquehanna University, and we are just delighted to have all of you here. Um, some of you may know this, but Susquehanna recently signed an articulation agreement with Luzerne County Community College, um, and we're really happy to have that partnership with all of you. Um, Bob, I wanted to make sure you had an opportunity to, to uh, share any opening remarks. Do you have something to share? I'll let me just say good uh, good morning and glad everybody's here. That's it, Malcolm. Let's get right into it. All right. Well, I, as we mentioned, um, there's an awful lot going on in the landscape of education and workforce trends. Um, I, I thought it would be good to have Sue start us out, uh, if that's all right with you, Sue. Uh, and also Melissa can chime in. But we're certainly uh, curious to hear uh, sort of a state of the union of uh, what's going on at Luzerne County Community College. Uh, what's going on at the satellites um, and in terms of enrollment trends, um, popular programs and majors, and uh, what your predictions are for the years ahead for the satellites. Great. Well, thank you so much for inviting us. And Melissa, please jump in. I know you're a newer member of our um, LCCC family, but um, we've worked together uh, along with uh, Bernadette and John um, on several initiatives. So Again, thank you for inviting us and, and we're grateful to participate. I guess I'd like to also express our appreciation on behalf of President Leary and the college for the support we've received from the region and community in the uh, Watson Town area. Of course, when you start with a new center, your growth is exponential typically, right? From semester to semester, but it, it truly, I mean, that is, is truly the case as we enter into our spring 2022 semester. We did delay our start by a couple of weeks. We were scheduled to begin face-to-face -face classes and online classes on the 18th of January. And due to you know, COVID, we um, decided to delay by a couple of weeks, which in retrospect, we think was a, probably a good decision. What we hear from our students is the individuals who want face-to-face -face did not want to start online and then move back into the classroom, right? Uh, we had that circumstance a couple of years ago, which was unavoidable. And um, those students who want in-person classes, we wanted to just assure that they would be able to do that. So that's why we um, started a bit later, everyone, whether they were online or in-person. I'd also like to mention, and then this might lead into some other things, that our, our student demographics, just like many community colleges, is, is changing, is different. We certainly still have our core of um, students right out of high school and our early college enrollment is, is really blossoming as well. And so we're, we're happy about all of that. But the demographic of that 24 to 35 year old person is a growing demographic for us at the community college. 
And I think that kind of probably will play into some of the discussion we might have about programming and how we might be able to posit positively impact the community in the greater Susquehanna Center and Northumberland County region. Um, top programs for us, no matter where the center or our center or our campus in Nanticoke are um, healthcare, health related health preparation programs are certainly leaders. We also um, have a number of programs in business, applied technology and um, computer information that are all also um, growing and trending up. We tend to find our, what we call applied programs, which are those that we try to prepare those students to go out into the workforce rapidly at the conclusion of their uh, diploma certificate or degree are really um, the programs that are at demographic, the 18 to, or excuse me, 24 to 35 year old student is most interested in. Uh, there are certainly some of those folks who want to transfer on for their baccalaureate, but many of those individuals are in a position where they've either been displaced from their job or they need to move up in that job. And the way to do that is, is through education. Uh, and one last comment I'll make, and then we can uh, go to some other folks to weigh in on this is micro credentials is a term that we use in education, but really what that means are shorter modules that give some type of boost when a student goes out for employment. So we are starting to really focus in on some micro credentials that might have value in the economy. That tends to be in the manufacturing realm. We can kind of uh, extract out certain skill sets that will help a person to get into the workforce very rapidly. We're doing some of that work in our communication arts area. And we also think there are probably some micro credentials in the healthcare world that we might be able to um, influence as well in the greater Susquehanna area. So those are just a few of the trends that, that we're seeing. I wanted to take an opportunity to uh, turn this to Senator Gordner just for a moment as well. Um, Senator, I know you represent an area that has uh, quite a few higher education institutions and um, doing our best to meet the workforce uh, needs in the Valley. Um, what is your sense from the state perspective, um, uh, connections to education and workforce, any updates on, on the trends that you're seeing uh, in, in talks uh, in, in Harrisburg and on the Capitol? Uh, thanks, Malcolm. Uh, let me make uh, one or two comments and then I'll answer your question because uh, I'm going to have to jump off uh, around 1230. Uh, we do have uh, the Legislative Reapportionment Commission uh, meeting today at one o'clock. Uh, they had, hopefully they, they had thought they were going to be able to meet last Friday, but uh, things were still in transition and being negotiated. Uh, but uh, the meeting is uh, scheduled and it's going to be held today at one o'clock. Uh, just for what it's worth, if anyone wants to jump off this at the end of uh, your meeting, uh, you can go to uh, you can go to the Senate Republican Caucus website page, and there'll be a live stream. Uh, you can go to Senator Kim Ward's website, uh, and there'll be a live stream. Or you can go to the Senate Republican Caucus Facebook page, and there'll be a live stream at one. Uh, to the extent anyone's interested in that. This is setting the uh, legislative districts for the state house and the state senate, uh, at least as of uh, nine o'clock last night. Uh, once again, the state senate maps uh, seem to be agreed to. Uh, the, the preliminary maps were approved 5-0. And uh, again, at least as of nine o'clock last night, uh, the, uh, the senate maps uh, final are going to be agreed to. Um, my, my district uh, from the preliminary has changed slightly. Still have, uh, or the 27th still has all of Columbia, Montour, Northumberland, and Snyder, uh, and parts of Luzerne. Uh, however, I no longer go to Nanticoke. So um, do not have uh, the main campus of LCC uh, in my district, uh, but uh, in, in what makes more sense, I'm picking up, I've, I've had, um, Municipalities, uh, Butler Township, uh, Sugarloaf Township, Cunningham, Black Creek, uh, just outside of Hazleton, and I'm picking up some more municipalities uh, right around that area, including uh, Shikshini, uh, Hollenbeck, Makanakwa, Denison Township, and some of those. So uh, that, that makes good sense. 
Um, and just further on uh, redistricting uh, with the congressional maps uh, that is sitting in the Commonwealth Court right now, the Supreme Court has told the Commonwealth Court uh, judge who had the uh, hearing and has the maps before her that she needs to issue her report uh, to the Supreme Court by Monday and that the uh, Supreme Court uh, will then immediately look at what she has done and the reasoning behind it and uh, look to make a quick decision. Uh, I just a last thought on that is uh, with everything happening the way it is, I would be very surprised if the uh, current uh, provisions of uh, the election and timelines and deadlines hold. Um, I think it's very possible that uh, our primary date may need to be postponed, uh, or at least the petition period process may need to be postponed uh, because the petition period process, Malcolm, you're familiar with this, is supposed to start in about uh, 10 days or so, and it's going to be a, a challenge for that to happen. So uh, stay tuned in regard to all of that. Um, one other thing, and then I'll answer your question. Um, the General Assembly uh, working together can get some things done sometime. And, you know, a week and a half ago, uh, we passed um, legislation unanimously in the House, unanimously in the Senate. Uh, the governor signed it the same day that it ended on his plate. And it sends uh, $220 million of the American Rescue Plan money out to uh, hospitals. Um, and it goes directly, while well, it goes to the hospitals, uh, the money is specifically targeted to uh, nurses that are on the floors uh, treating patients. And uh, they have uh, com completely been stressed and, and challenged and everything else along those lines. Uh, and so uh, that money is directed in all of our local hospitals, uh, received money, some good amounts, but it is all directed towards uh, the, uh, the workers on the floor taking care of patients uh, in regard to uh, bonus pay, incentive pay, that sort of thing. And uh, we also put money aside uh, for loan forgiveness uh, for nurses that are on the floor uh, doing that critical type of work. Uh, because uh, we all know that there's a, a great demand for nurses, um, again, whether it's RNs or LPNs or nurse assistants, uh, some of which uh, go through programs like LCC. Um, so uh, very important to, to make sure that those uh, forgiveness programs are out there for a, a field that we desperately need people to go into as well as stay and not be burnt out. So just in regard to LCC, um, had a long uh, history with LCC, um, started when I was a state representative and uh, they needed a, a permanent location in Berwick. Uh, my first RCAP uh, was to uh, turn a, a building in downtown Berwick, the Eagles building, uh, into a, a site for uh, LCC to have a permanent location. Um, and then when I became Senator, uh, certainly got to see the facility in uh, Shimokin, um, which there's been a, a lasting relationship there. Uh, there was a, uh, I know, a nursing program in Coltmont that uh, Representative Belfani uh, had been uh, instrumental in, um, but I've also, uh, you know, seen what they've done in, in Watsontown, um, and uh, they do an uh, incredible job. Um, I should mention that on Tuesday of this coming week, uh, Governor Wolf will be presenting his uh, last budget, so uh, we'll certainly want to be paying attention to what's in there and uh, certainly hope uh, that we can continue to provide some additional monies uh, to our uh, community colleges and our colleges in general in regard to the great work that they do, but um, especially in regard to workforce development. Um, in, 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 this, uh, in this Zoom call today between CSIU and uh, LCC and the uh, Workforce Development uh, Council that's out of Williamsport, uh, all do a great job and collaboration of uh, training people for the different skills that we need uh, out in the workforce today. So sorry that I wandered a little bit, but thanks for the opportunity, Malcolm, and I'll probably be leaving in about 10 minutes. No, thank you, Senator Gordner. We appreciate the update, and uh, I was hoping to get the, the, the update on reapportionment anyway, so you, uh, you, you were perfectly timed, and uh, we're, we're glad that the district will, um, will really be aligned with, with what we are, we're, are used to in the Valley. So thanks for that update. 
Yeah, and I should say that Senator Yaw, I don't know his complete district, but he will continue to have Union County as he does now with the Lycoming. Very good. Well, we appreciate you taking the time. Um, I knew it was a bit of a challenge to juggle knowing that the reapportionment commission work will be starting at once. So we thank you for taking some time out of your schedule to visit with us today uh, and for being a champion of uh, Luzerne over the years. It's certainly uh, admirable. And uh, again, I didn't realize that you were involved with that first um, uh, satellite. And, and it's good to know that, that your work has persisted over the years in, in supporting the, their efforts. Just for fun, um... Uh, the person that uh, worked out of the governor's office that helped me secure that first RCAP was someone by the name of Lisa Baker, uh, who worked uh, for the uh, Ridge administration. And uh, she has reminded, of, reminded me of that many, many times. Um, but uh, for those of us that know, she's, uh, she started work for uh, Senator Charlie Lamond a long time ago, but uh, state senator in her own right, chairman of the Judiciary Committee, but when she worked for uh, Governor Ridge, uh, she was the one who got me that first RCAP for the Berg project. And Senator Baker is, is a great senator and uh, I know another champion for uh, Luzerne County Community College. So um, I also didn't know that uh, Senator. So good to know that other layer of connections. So, uh, and where people end up, you just never know. So uh, uh, thank you very much for that update. Um, I wanted to move on um, and, and allow the uh, CSIU to just uh, chime in as well. I know that there's a number of uh, collaborations. You were certainly very helpful and instrumental in, in the Watson Town location, um, helping to get that off the ground um, in collaboration, but also some STEM uh, workforce issues that you're working with and also some uh, K to 12 initiatives you have about uh, you know, workforce ready initiatives. Uh, could you just give a, a, a quick state of uh, what's going on in your footprint? Um, and certainly Bernadette and John, feel free to trade off as necessary. Well, I'll kick off and then hand it to Bernadette. First off, we are so committed to the development of LCCC in our footprint and had everything to do with the communities that we serve and the students that come from poverty that need access to higher education. And uh, there's no doubt that community colleges offer that and allows our families to save thousands and thousands of dollars. So we're grateful to see this partnership, thrilled that Susquehanna has made that even more uh, exciting with their connections. And I uh, really look forward to developing this further. And Bernadette is our community outreach officer and can fill in the gaps that I would not make the connection for. So Bernadette, over to you. Sure, well, I think there are a couple of really exciting things. Um, that you mentioned in the K-12 pipeline, certainly working with um, PDE closely to make sure that our 17 districts in our service area are up to date on workforce readiness and career development. Um, we've done some work with teacher in the workplace. And even when the pandemic restricted teachers and students going out into places of employment, we then switched to virtual and we started working with um, Mark Perna creating career trees which really talk about all of the different opportunities that students can access employment, both with and without and with additional training. So not just looking at a four-year college for all model, but looking at the micro-credentialing that Sue was talking about, um, looking at how community colleges can be a stepping stone either to a complete degree or to a university like with partnerships with Susquehanna. So these career trees are a great way and I'd love to share some of that work. Um, also, we have a STEM ecosystem that we are a part of. I sat in on a meeting yesterday which brings stakeholders from across our region together to look at STEM initiatives. And that's again where I look to LCCC. Um, we have a, a grant through PA Smart Grant that we were awarded, which is allowing us to do some work looking at the needs of labor and industry right here in that Watson Town area and our surrounding areas and seeing how we can match programs and micro credentials to those needs. In addition to some of the other collaborations um, like uh, early, early college for students. And then I think the other thing I would just mention, you know, is that the CSIU does have a lot of programs that try to get uh, people who want to advance their um, place in the workforce, but maybe don't have the means to go right into college who need some of that micro-credentialing and support through grants like Direct Care Worker Heroes and through our WATCH grant, which was funded through HPOG, 
which is no longer available to us, but put hundreds and hundreds of people in our area through credentialed programs and increased um, really the, their, they, they moved from jobs that were not family sustaining jobs into family sustaining jobs in a very short period of time because of the watch program and that HPOG funding. So we're certainly hoping that that will continue and we'll be able to have supportive programs like watch and like direct care worker heroes where someone who's maybe wants to become a CNA or an LPN can get a career coach, a counselor to walk them through that, to remove the barriers that so often exist in front of people who really do wish to uh, you know, improve their career status, but have those barriers that might be childcare, it might be transportation, uh, it might be just navigating a system and so many success stories that we could share there. So really looking forward to all those partnerships. John, did I miss anything? Probably, There's a, there is a lot going on, but those are certainly some highlights. Well, I just one other piece, as much as we talk about the Greater Susquehanna Center, our footprint is perfect for LCCC regarding Shimokin, Watsontown, and Berwick. So it covers all of what we do. So mm -hmm. what we do has such an opportunity to improve the services we provide for everyone in our five county region. You know, I should also mention that our own LPN Center has made a move from Lewisburg onto our central campus at the CSIU, which isn't, a, you know, necessarily a competing uh, institution in any way. It is an LPN Career Center where we're also looking to do things like, um, you know, nurse aid training and certifications. And there's lots of possibility to link those micro credentials with LCCC with that LPN Center as well. Very good. Thank you very much for that update. And uh, while Senator Gordon is also in the room, I just wanted to thank him for his prior support of uh, FIA grants. And uh, the FIA program is something that goes across all higher education. Um, can you know students can actually take that with them to the institution where they choose to land, which is just a really fabulous tool. <clears throat> There's a lot of talk of um, providing uh, support to low and moderate income students and their families to get to college. And I just wanted to applaud the Senator for, uh, FIA has been a longstanding Pennsylvania staple. Um, and there's been some various changes to that over the years. But again, it, it, it really is targeted that this, it's portable. So students decide where they go, what meets their best economic and, and educational needs, and it's portable. Um, so, John, I, I don't know if you have any updates on, on that in the process, but just wanted to applaud you for your support there. Um, and, and I know we've had uh, some great support from other members of, uh, uh, of both the House and Senate um, in making sure that FIA continues to be a program um, to support our students. Yeah, I don't know what will be in Governor Wolf's uh, budget in regard to that, but uh, our hearings under Senator Brown will start uh, and will be conducted over a four week period. Um, but I sit in a caucus uh, that feels very strongly about uh, individual choice and parental control and uh, flexibility, those sorts of things. And uh, certainly with the FIA program, um, it, it, it empowers um, that student um, to uh, make the decision as to you know, where to go with that FIA funding. Uh, so while institutions uh, need support, and uh, certainly community colleges um, are um, chief among those. And I, I don't know that I said it earlier, uh, and I don't mean to, uh, to um, box uh, the community colleges in, but for non-traditional students, uh, the community colleges are a lifeline. Uh, they really are. Uh, I saw that so much when uh, we went to bat with Berwick and I've just seen it uh, from here on in. Um, folks like myself and, and Malcolm, I'm sure, uh, we knew from high school we were going into college and uh, you know, we were able to come up with the uh, resources to do it. Uh, but so many individuals uh, don't think that they can do it financially or they just need a break. Uh, they don't feel like they're the best student. Uh, they get out into the workforce and then they find some opportunities and uh, thanks to uh, the community colleges with flexible schedules, uh, evening classes, et cetera, they can pick up credits. And then uh, with matriculation agreements with places like uh, Susquehanna or Bloomsburg University, um, you know, those credits that they pick up, they can end up uh, turning in 
uh, instead of an associate's degree, having a bachelor's degree. Um, and, you know, I've gone to the community colleges and seen 20 year olds and I'd seen 40 and 50 year olds. And, uh, you know, I think that's that's what's great about uh, the the many uh, secondary educational options that are out there. And I'm glad that we have them for our area. All right. I'm going to go, Malcolm. Good to see everyone. Thank you, Senator. Have a great day. Um, I wanted to just, uh, again, um, frame up something with uh, the leadership from Luzerne that joined us today. Um, certainly, there's been a lot of attention in, in the greater Susquehanna Valley about um, community college access and affordability and what options are out there. Um, the one thing I always uh, remind people um, when I talk to them about community college, I, I continue to say Luzerne is doing some great work in, in Watson Town with that outreach center and in Chimokin. And what I'm continually reminding people is we have uh, an investment in a community college that takes into account the administrative um, support of a central uh, um, home institution uh, with Luzerne County Community College's main branch, but it uh, doesn't duplicate that administrative structure, which some people seem to want to see. Well, it's only real if it's if there's only one of them and it's it's at a certain place. Um, but what I, I love about Luzerne and, um, is that, that you've really worked creatively with the community, you've worked with CSIU, the Greater Susquehanna Valley Chamber, to really do your very best to make sure you're serving students um, with uh, low to moderate income needs, first generation kids. Could you talk about how you um, really do your best to, to do outreach to the population in the region, um, both at the K to 12 level, but also uh, what types of outreach are you targeting for those uh, people that maybe stepped out or um, are only coming to uh, seek a, an associate's degree later in life? Right, let me let me try to address a few of those things, Malcolm, thank you. Um, so, you know, I think the idea of us serving a wide, diverse number of people that Senator Gordner had alluded to is, is absolutely the case. It's one of the things I love about working at a community college. I feel it's a higher education institution that is exemplary in diversity, equity, and inclusion. And we certainly can do better, but it really is that, you know, you can you can come to college, whether you're underprepared, whether your K through 12 experience was not as stellar as you had hoped, you know, we will help you to rise up to the level that you need to um, for the for the program. So like I just want to say that that is that is a, a true need of ours. We've also, as we have a number now of what we call dedicated centers, including um, in Berwick and and Shamoke and, and 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 at Watson Town, we tend to try to use technology and administrative support centrally and not redundantly in our dedicated centers. And the human resources we commit to those centers are those that serve serve the students directly in an advising capacity. And also our center directors are tasked with, and Melissa is now tasked with being out in the community and, and, and doing things such as this, working with the chamber, working with the local um, workforce development groups and the career link, other higher ed um, groups that are in the region. So we really see that our center staff, which is very lean, are those that service the, the students directly. And you know, we, we've been very appreciative because we, when we came into the greater Susquehanna circumstance, um, CSIU and, and Bob in the chamber, and you know, we were very welcomed in in that way. And I can still remember some of those discussions at the Nanticoke campus that we started and you know, things like this evolved, right? And it took us a while, but um, I will say that there was a relentlessness, and I mean this in a very positive way, of the organizers from the community that really allowed us to plow through that and persevere and create that center. So again, our, our deep appreciation to the community members that supported us through this. Thank you very we're much. Not, we're, we're not done yet. True, true. Thank you, John. Um, and I, I wanted to uh, just mention Kristen Moyer uh, shared with me in the chat that there's uh, a program that she wanted to share, uh, got her thinking about during our conversation from the Appalachian Regional Commission. So Kristen, could you just give us a brief uh, update on that? Sure, thanks, Malcolm. For those of you who do not know who I am, I'm Kristen Moyer. I'm the Community Relations Director at CETA Council of Governments in Lewisburg. 
I'm working from home today in Watsontown. So <laughs> you guys are right down the street from me. <laughs> so, but anyway, what I wanted to share is um, CEDACOG, uh, for those of you who don't know, we are in um, the Appalachian Regional Commission, which serves the 13 states. It's a federal program. Um, there is an opportunity for, and I'm particularly sharing this for the folks in the IU, there's an opportunity for, um, high schoolers and middle schoolers and high school teachers for a STEM camp um, at the Oak Ridge National Laboratories. I did send the information to um, one of your employees, Amy Flieger. I used to work with Amy at CEDACOG, so she does have the information, um, but I just wanted to highlight that. Uh, if anybody else is interested, I'll be glad to share it. Um, it's a summer camp. I think last year it was virtual. They're hoping to do it in person this year, but it's also, for, like I said, it's for middle schoolers, high schoolers, and then there's a separate camp for high school teachers. So I just wanted you to be aware of it. Be happy to get you more information if you'd like it. Thanks, Malcolm. Thank you, Kristen. I appreciate the update. And um, we have uh, joining us today as well as <clears throat> Justin from the Daily Item. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, he had a question for Sue and perhaps Melissa could also chime in uh, specifically about the growth of the Watson Down campus. Uh, what's enrollment look like this semester and what are projects looking like moving forward? And everyone else on the call, please consider what questions you have for the panel. Um, I will open it up right after this one from Justin. So uh, feel free to ask away. And Melissa, I really do need you to join in on this one. I was just grabbing my stats from the semester. As you know, we just started the semester this week. So we actually anticipate that these numbers might bump up a little bit as students are allowed to register. Um, so from last year to this year, uh, and Melissa will cite the exact percentage increase because it's astounding, but we have increased in our, our what we call headcount, which would be students, in the number of registrations, which means students um, taking multiple um, classes within uh, the Watson Town Center, and then also in, in credits, right? So. Um, we had gone from 2021, spring 2021, of a headcount of 22 students to a headcount of 43 and counting. Again, these are, this is, um, this is from a little bit ago, and, and Melissa has a much better sense about the recent ones. In fact, I'm seeing actually um, a great increase even this week, so Melissa will be able to speak to that. So we are kind of like bubbling things. We also went from like 120 credits in, in spring 21 to um, over 300 now. It's so, Justin, we can get you those specifics. And um, in fact, I'll, I, I see your email, so we can email you the exact things if you'd like those for, for a reference. We, went, we count FTEs, full-time equivalents, of course, which is a common thing to do. And we went from 10 FTE and almost um, tripled that. So Melissa, join in because you you kind of have all of the recent information on this. Thank you, Susan. And I appreciate your willingness to have me on the call today as well. I'm thrilled to be uh, one of the newest members of the Luzerne County Community College staff. This is day 10 for me. Uh, so I apologize if I don't have all of the information you're looking for, but I'll do my best. At the start of the week, which as uh, Susan said was the beginning of our semester, we had 45 students working out of this, the Greater Susquehanna Center. And in taking a look at the work that they are looking to complete, the highest number, in fact, a majority of our students are in the associates program for nursing consideration. So I am today in the, the newly renovated lab for those students who are taking the anatomy and physiology, for example, we have both anatomy and physiology one with its lab, as well as anatomy and physiology two with a lab running this semester. And I'm happy to see that we have 16 students in that second anatomy and physiology lab that tells us that many of our students in that nursing consideration program are nearing, uh, you know, near completion 
and hoping to move into the program itself. In addition to that, we have a number of students who are working through EMS certification, some students in the general studies, and then a smattering, as we would say, of a few other programs as well. And if you don't mind, I would also say I'm the director for the Berwick Center. And it's interesting as I look to see the difference between enrollment here in the Greater Susquehanna Center versus the Berwick Center. In Berwick, we see more of those early college students, so more of the traditional high school age students who are coming into the center in order to potentially get a jump start on college. But again, when I see what we have here in Greater Susquehanna Valley, uh, we see that we have a number of students who have a very clear indication that they'd like to go into healthcare, and we're looking to support them through that process. Thank you for that. Uh, we really appreciate it and are, are pleased to hear the good news from your campus. And uh, from another colleague in higher education, we all look at census dates. And I know that that question might have been a bit unfair as your census date probably hasn't hit officially as ours ha hasn't. So uh, Justin, we appreciate you uh, um, covering this for the daily item. I think it's really important for the readers to know um, what's going on. I think sometimes, um, uh, as a valley, we that's where we fall short. Is there's so many really excellent opportunities in higher education uh, and K to 12 um, that, that if we could just let everyone know about them um, that would have an interest, we we'd really come a long way. And it, thank you, Justin, for helping to share the word uh, with your readers. Um, are there any questions from the group? I know we have a, a few other <clears throat> guests that have joined us, um, some from various workforce. Uh, it, uh, backgrounds and and I'm just curious if there are any other questions um, with this education panel. Bob, Bob? Bob, Bob Garrett, if I can uh, just jump in while folks are thinking of their questions uh, to ask and just uh, mention a couple of things. Uh, first off, I wanted to let make sure everybody knows there is a local advisory committee at the Greater Susquehanna Valley Center. Uh, we're Looking forward to meeting uh, Melissa in person. Uh, we've certainly have met virtually a number of times now, um, but there is a local advisory committee that we're building and we'd be interested in volunteers if there's folks on this call. I will tell you that the, the, the foundation of that advisory committee is already in place with uh, John Karalja and Bernadette Borkel, uh, Dave Zardman and uh, Judy Rees uh, representing early learning uh, out of the YMCA. But uh, John is in the process of building that among the superintendents um, that are part of the CSIU and others, but we would love to have employers and other folks involved with that local advisory committee because uh, Melissa will be looking to us and uh, President Spry, uh, Spry will be looking to us to, uh, uh, to give our input and sort of guide uh, the, the campus as it continues to grow. Um, you know, I'm fond of pointing out that, that uh, our, our little center, has, uh, which still has a sign out front that says Watson Town Elementary School. So it's still a small center, but we're growing. And uh, while, uh, uh, while uh, higher education generally is pulling back a little bit, uh, career education is off 20%. Uh, from the fall semester to the spring semester, we grew by 143%. Now, yes, that was a small number and it's still a too small of a number, but we're growing. We're heading the right direction. So that's an invitation to the advisory committee. I wanted to mention also that on February 17th, so in about uh, two weeks, a little less than two weeks, um, we're going to be having a, an open house. Um, we are following CDC guidelines, so it'll be uh, a little bit socially distanced, et cetera, but we're going to have an open house. Uh, that's sponsored by our local advisory committee at the center up in Watson Town. Um, and that open house is being co-sponsored uh, by Leadership Susquehanna Valley and the Greater Susquehanna Valley Young Professionals. And it does include a little stop by afterwards at the Watson Inn. So come on up, uh, we'd love to have you. We'll be up there. Uh, you'll get to see that, that, that sparkling room that Melissa is sitting in, which is just blows you away. And you know that our best days lie ahead when you see what uh, has been done there. And um, as a, and the last thing I just want to mention, uh, Malcolm, is uh, uh, Susan was very kind in, in suggesting that uh, uh, or calling out the support that she had from uh, John uh, Karalja, Bernadette, myself, and others uh, in the Valley. You know, we've been involved with uh, 
trying to, re to start a community college in the greater Susquehanna Valley for well over a decade uh, now. In fact, Dave Zartman, who's on our advisory committee, is the, uh, the initial uh, president of the Susquehanna Valley Community Education Project. I was the subsequent uh, to him president of that. John was my vice president. And what we concluded was there was not a moment to lose. We had to get started because a community college education is that critical mezzanine, that micro certification that will lead to careers. I mean, just this morning, I was on with uh, Joanne Troutman and, and with George Vinios talking about how can we keep that pipeline going? How can we build into a pipeline that might include a maker space in every community that then they would go to LCCC and then they would go uh, on to Cornell University or Susquehanna University or any of the other uh, our schools, I think it's 16 now that have articulation agreements uh, with Luzerne County Community College. And uh, we see that as critically important as keeping that pipeline flowing uh, for the careers that exist in the future. Now, no good deed goes unpunished. Uh, so I do want to mention one other date. Um, I've been recruited, arm twisted, however you want to say it, uh, to chair the, uh, the uh, annual alumni golf tournament uh, for the Luzerne County Community College Foundation. I've got a blue ribbon panel helping with me with that, Dave Jolly, Jerry O'Donnell, and Jim Zara, not, uh, and not least of which the staff of the foundation assisting us. But if you want to play in Northeastern Pennsylvania's finest, finest golf course, the Blue Ridge Trail Golf Course, our tournament is on May 23rd. Uh, last year, we set a, a new high mark uh, for the scholarships, uh, the funding we got for scholarships for Luzerne. Uh, but this year, we're going to even do better. So uh, sign up your team Mar May 23rd for the annual Luzerne County Community College Foundation Golf Tournament. Thanks, Bob. Any other questions for the panel? They can also be panel to panel questions if, if that's helpful. Um, if we don't see any, I'll, I'll ask another one um, for Sue and Melissa. Um, certainly, you know, Susquehanna University has a, a deep commitment to uh, educating students that are first generation, low moderate income individuals. And we have about 30% of our population are first gen and it happens to be about 30% are Pell eligible, which uh, for those of you that aren't in higher education, um, Pell is, represents the, the lowest financial ability to pay uh, for an education, I would say. And um, in terms of uh, Luzerne County's footprint, um, how are you reaching that population? Uh, could you give us a snapshot perhaps of how many students you serve that are Pell or first generation? Let me start off and then Melissa actually has a lot of experience with the comment I'm going to make. Um, we have a very robust early college program at Luzerne, as do a lot of institutions, institutions of higher education. We really are looking for the student who is not necessarily the high achiever that that person's going to land on their feet, probably no matter what experience they go into. We're really looking for that middle of the road student who is possibly at some risk of either not completing or not continuing beyond their K through 12 education. And to get to the point of your question, we see that outreach and involvement with early college students as a primary way to give first gen students some confidence in their abilities to pursue post-secondary education. Um, our former early college program, I would say, was more of a young scholars program, and we certainly have those students still, yet we're really seeing that student who needs a confidence boost and some direction and some career counseling to see that there are a number of um, types of occupations that are well-paying, family-sustaining jobs that might require a four-year or beyond uh, education but often are in that middle skills area that requires some post-secondary education and training and possibly credentialing. And that we really feel that whole career pathway notion is uh, a very important way to get that first gen student as well as some of the non-traditional students that come, come later. So Melissa, I know you have a lot of experience with this. So do you want to comment? 
Sure, and I appreciate the question. I think it's very important as a first gen student um, myself, as well as Pell eligible, I understand the importance of post-secondary education and also understand that it doesn't always mean that four-year degree. But I would agree with Sue when we look at the early college program, that is the attempt to blur the lines between secondary education and post-secondary education. In many cases, students who are first gen may lack the guidance from parents who haven't attended college themselves. And that's where we can pick up as advisors and directors of the local centers to help students with the process. As Bernadette mentioned earlier, there are sometimes barriers uh, beyond financial issues, but sometimes just really understanding the transition from secondary education to post-secondary education. And we appreciate our partners like Susquehanna University I think for us, we need to be sure that we're working with students, particularly those that Susan mentioned, who may not be certain that they're cut out for college. Not only do we want to support them, but we want to make sure we're checking these transferability uh, agreements with our local institutions because we want them not only to gain confidence when they're taking this coursework in high school, but also to gain transferable credits. And I also believe even if we come back to that workforce development piece, what's great about our local community colleges is this stackability of credits. The idea that we have modular learning in place, even if students aren't quite ready for the four year degree, they have the opportunity to take credits and with advisement can take credits that are going to help them whether they enter the workforce immediately or potentially move into another post-secondary institution. So again, I appreciate the question. I apologize for not having the specific numbers in terms of percentage of first-generation students, Pell eligible students. But as Susan mentioned, those are our data points that we can provide for you. May I jump in there for one moment? Sure. Melissa, I just wanna say that the things you just expressed and Sue as well, and everyone on this call, Bob, we, what I'm hearing is just very exciting to me because I feel like th this group of people and those that you know we bring along have the power to really shift the whole atmosphere, uh, the whole paradigm of higher ed where there are many, many options and one is not valued more than another. It's about what's right for each person. And we provide these pathways and these stepping stones. And that's what's going to ultimately give us a vibrant local economy you know, not some um, of, of the perhaps stigmas or, or the prestige that came with certain decisions for students. These can all be on equal footing and we can support every student in the decision that's best for them. It's very exciting. It, I can almost get choked up because I feel like this is the shift that we need for our young people. We need paths that are right for them and we need the supports along the way. So I, I applaud everyone on this call and I think that that's just an incredibly important mission. Thank you, Bernadette. And I think that if, if nothing else, when we walk away from this call today, you can see that there is a Rolodex of opportunities for um, the, the students in our Valley. Um, and, and there really is opportunities for a, a choose your own path where um, there, there really is uh, access to uh, education and career training that will match up um, for our employment needs in the Valley. Um, and we're grateful that that all of you came out today. Um, Jeff had to send his regrets that Jeff Reber, a commissioner from Union County, had to jump off the call for another obligation, but he just wanted to, me to share his appreciation to the group for coming together. And, and he's really optimistic about the educational and training opportunities that are available in the Valley and uh, for, for hundreds of families and for really family sustaining jobs and careers. So um, just sending that uh, from him. Um, are there any other questions from the group um, before I let Chris and Bob uh, close us out for any logistics? Hi, hey, Malcolm, I have a, a quick question for the, for the group, particularly the educational folks. Sure, Ben, go ahead. Well, timing on this, uh, and I'm just trying to think from the realistic standpoint, would there be an appropriate time to target the guidance counselors at high schools to make sure they understand the opportunities for their students, not just in higher education, but in what we're proposing here today? Because that seems to be the hurdle that I hear uh, from, from many students 
uh, the lack of guidance counselors understanding the total picture and the potential for the students to increase their education, not just traditional four-year colleges. And if I could, if I could work to answer your question, and then others might be able to chime in, I'd be glad to. You said, when is the time? What's the timing? And that's a great question. It's like a year ago, or maybe five years ago, but if not that now. No, I agree. I agree with you. It was it was years ago. So, and, you can, and you can ask uh, uh, Dirty Works, uh, uh, David Rowe. You can you can you know see it in the reality of the world. So if that's the case and we can't go back, we have to deal with now and going forward. And that's where Bob talked about the advisory council. So how does that become a viable or important thing? Because that gets the local superintendents to have a, an actual hand in the steering of what happens in the local community college. And then we have partnerships with SPASCA, which is another part that we're trying to get on the, on the advisory council, which is the local guidance counselors who would be part of this process so they have a hand in what's going on and can help to shape it. They build, then they have ownership. As they have ownership, they'll be more supportive of casting that vision that we need to cast to get more and more people involved. So that number of however many credits we just said will quadruple and more so out into the years to come. And I would just add another thing that um, uh, I, I know CSIU has been very much a part of this in K-12 education. I've seen that the curriculum um, at all levels from uh, some state mandates, to be honest, about trying to make sure there's additional um, workforce or direct work opportunity exposure in curriculum. Um, and I have a, a, a first grader and a third grader, and I've actually noted um, some of the pieces that come home that are starting to put uh, direct career opportunities in front of kids, even at that young age. Um, so I, I would say, Ben, that I'm, I'm uh, really optimistic that there, there are some really good things going on locally, at least from what I see in, in the district where my kids are, um, that they're, they're really starting to, to talk about what are careers that are out there um, so kids can start picturing themselves in the workforce. But Ben, I think one thing that, and, and for all of you that don't know, Ben um, uh, is a great uh, employer in, in Sealands Grove uh, with LB Water. And uh, it's, it's another place where I'm sure Ben's always looking for talent uh, to fill all the opportunities he has and not all of them require a four-year degree. Um, so it is really important that we think about the needs of employers like LB Water, um, that, that they can find a skilled workforce for every one of their jobs, which there are many. And uh, uh, so that those businesses that are locating here uh, can find what they need in our talent workforce. Um, and I, I do appreciate, Ben, I don't know if you want to add anything to that, but, um, but thank you for the question. All right, Bob and Chris, anything yeah. to round us out? Yeah, thank you, uh, Malcolm. I, I guess I'm, I'm just going to uh, mention for the chamber and then ask Chris to uh, talk a little bit about some upcoming events at the chamber and wrap us up. The, you know, the, at the Greater Susquehanna Valley Chamber, for some time now, we've been talking about workforce. You know, it has risen and risen and risen in priority in the Greater Susquehanna Valley. When we did our first uh, strategic survey uh, eight years ago now, um, workforce was in the top five, but it wasn't the number one. Uh, when we were back out in the field last summer in the middle of the pandemic, what we heard from employers is this is the number one issue. This is critical, Bob, you've got to get on top of this. And it's become very, very clear to us that it's an issue with the pipeline. We have what I like to call the continuum of education. I'm holding my fingers trying to create a chain, but we have this, this chain, if you think about it. And uh, the chamber, I think we're touching every place in the chain uh, from our, my chairman who happens to also chair the Early Learning Investment Commission, uh, for our valley, uh, Art Thomas, and the youngest of our children. Uh, in fact, we're involved with prenatal uh, career choices because uh, you know what happens uh, early, early at the very earliest stages of a of a person's life cycle affect them throughout their life. And then, um, and then you know we we work. Uh, we've been involved for over four decades with our business and education. Uh, uh, committee involved with um, primary and secondary education. 
we were very active in uh, in career education. All of our tech schools, whether it's Sun Tech, Northumberland County Tech, and now Columbia Montour uh, Tech School, with both our private uh, schools such as uh, McCann and Triangle, uh, to re helping to recruit Lackawanna College uh, to Sunbury, uh, making sure that there's plenty of students going to the Shemokin Center of LCCC, and then when. When uh, Tom Leary showed up and said, hey, if you'll be my community, I'll be your community college, he was singing a song that we were, I, I think John Corral and I were dancing in the aisles. It was not a pretty sight uh, seeing two big bald-headed guys dancing, but we were so happy to hear that. And then the process we went through was very, very exhaustive. We looked at 27 different uh, facilities, narrowed it down to three or four, settled on Watson Town. And, you know, it really, uh, it's no secret. The reason why we're there is um, there's this, this highway being built called the Thruway. And uh, that Thruway with its crisscross of I-80 is going to be a major, major um, uh, thoroughfare there in places like Milton and Watsontown. And Luzerne got in while the getting was good and have uh, established and are now growing what we saw as possibly the weak link uh, in the greater Susquehanna Valley, which was a community college. And, and I'm happy to say with this partnership uh, that the CSIU and Luzerne County Community College with, uh, with um, Susan Spry and Tom Leary when he's back with us and, and Melissa Day, uh, what we have going here is I believe we have a strong, strong chain. You know, it's often said that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link and we have no weak links uh, now. And we really appreciate uh, Joanne Troutman uh, bringing uh, Cornell uh, into our frame of reference. You know, we, we refer to Route 15 as the, uh, the, the, the avenue of the Nells, Bucknell and Cornell, and, and that's a, a nice bookend. I'll take those two universities any day. Uh, so, so anyhow, uh, what I'd like to do, Malcolm, is just to point out to everybody is we, we set out on a mission to uh, build a strong chain of education, of lifelong learning, from micro-credentialing to great kindergarten. It's all good. And, uh, and we're happy to say that we're getting there. We're not there yet. Uh, if you can serve on our advisory committee, I know that Bernadette and John and I would welcome uh, your involvement uh, on that. And we'll look forward to uh, the, the, our best days are yet to come. And with that, Chris, I'll leave it with you to tell us about some things that are coming up in the near future at the Greater Susquehanna Valley Chamber of Commerce. Thanks, Bob. Uh, in the chat, you'll see uh, that there's a link to our chamber calendar. Uh, at the chamber calendar, you'll see a couple of great things that we've got going on. I mentioned earlier in the chat uh, in, in uh, a link there that uh, the, the event Bob was referencing that on February 17th in the evening, we'll be having a Young Professionals and Leadership Susquehanna Valley uh, after hours event that will pair uh, two places there on Main Street in Watson Town first, uh, LCCC's campus there, as well as the Watson Inn. Um, I'm told now that event is free for everyone to come to. So please sign up so we get a number for our, our catering and we would uh, we'd really love to see you there. Uh, that day also happens to be uh, Leadership Susquehanna Valley's Local Government Day. Uh, so if you're interested in learning more about that, please feel free to connect with me um, and uh, I'll leave my information here in the chat as well. I'm pleased to say that on uh, February 24th, the, the Chamber is hosting a virtual event that is a lunch and learn, so it's over the lunch hour, and the idea is to talk about hospitality in the region. Uh, we've been talking a little bit about better normal and what that looks like, and we want to make sure that uh, we're touching on the subject of hospitality, and uh, it relates back into the soft skills that we're hearing, the employability skills uh, here in uh, in workforce. What does that look like serving our small businesses and beyond? So February 24th, uh, please consider signing up for that event uh, through the chamber uh, for virtual virtual experience there. And then uh, we're really excited about two of our premier events that are coming up on March 11th. Uh, the Chamber will welcome back Dr. Anibon Basu. Uh, Dr. Basu has been with us for 14 years and he gives us a fantastic economic forecast. Um, we found that the virtual experience for that is even better than the in-person one. So we're going to stick to virtual for that because you get to see his, his data up front and you'll be able to receive it uh, in your inbox as well. So we want to make sure that you get connected to our economic forecast. That's March 11th. And lastly, the, the other big premier event we're really excited for is uh, just as we kick off the second quarter, uh, May 4th, not, uh, not Star Wars Day, 
Uh, that's not what we're celebrating. Instead, it's the chambers, and that's, by the way, that's May the 4th be with you. So my geekiness has now officially come out for everyone. Uh, but on May 4th, the chamber will have our annual meeting and award ceremony. We're really excited uh, to do that in person. We'll be at the Pine Barn Inn in Danville. Uh, that's just a few of the things we're doing. We'll, we'll have a spattering of other pieces that come together before the annual meeting, but uh, those are available for sign up now. Please check it out. And the link is in the, uh, in the chat. Thanks, Bob. Thank you all. And uh, uh, one more huge thank you to our panelists, Sue, Melissa, Bernadette, and John. Uh, very grateful to have you here. Wish we could have had 100 participants in the call, but you know we're thankful that Justin's going to make sure our audience was much broader with the, the coverage that he'll have uh, with the Daily Item readership. Uh, but thank you all again, Luzerne. We're so grateful that you're a partner and in this whole process and a new neighbor, so uh, even closer. So great to see you all and have a great Friday.